So let's continue our examples from last time. Any, any questions before we jump into it? Okay. Let's continue our example from last time. I filled out some of this code just to get it out there and, uh, and not have to get bogged down with the, the little details. Uh, testing this bank account class, like we've been doing basically that complexity since test two, so I don't want to get bogged down on that one. Uh, so here's the bank account test. I'm going to create a bank account, call this uh, getter check account, which is basically get the funds uh, checking the how, many, how much money they have. Uh, and I'm going to call assert equals on that, deposit some money, withdraw some money, make sure everything's the same, create another bank account for me, and then uh, you know, make sure I have, wow, this is backwards. Tests don't test anything if you have bugs in your tests. Uh, all right. Uh, and then I'm going to have Matt transfer $50.55 to me, and then make sure that we have the right values in our account. Again, uh, make sure that is overdrawn method is working the way it should be. Overdraw Matt's account, and then make sure that it is, in fact, overdrawn. Uh, for is overdrawn, I'm using assert false here. Uh, just, I don't know. To be fancy, I guess, you can use assert true and then the not operator, or just assert false, either way. Uh, so there's my bank account tests. Any questions on these ones? Which I assume there are, are not. Well, this is, we've been doing this for a while, uh, but if there are, I do want to know them. Especially, if, I don't know, I don't know what you'd have questions about, but if you have questions about anything. That part should be pretty routine at this point. So, of course, after I say I don't expect questions, nobody's going to ask a question anymore. I shouldn't say that. Um, but all right, so let's test this bank class. This bank class has two methods. One, add account. Where we're going to add bank accounts to the bank. And then get large accounts. This is the one we really want to test. The other one's just you know, adding to a data structure. Uh, that's, it's going to be a one-liner. It's going to be fine. Get large accounts, a little trickier. I have some threshold, and I want to return all of the accounts in an array list that are larger, that have more money than that threshold. So this is what we really want to test. So testing this bank. Let's test it. So first, I'm going to need a new bank, which I'm just going to call bank, because why not? New bank. And I don't have a constructor in the bank class, so I get the default constructor. That's the only constructor I have. So that's the one I'm going to use. And we actually won't need a constructor for what we're doing. We don't have anything specific to initialize the bank with, so we're not going to give it anything. Then we're going to do bank dot add account. And I'm going to do this in one line. I, I, I'm going to write up just one test case for this. This is a situation where we would write a lot, but uh, this one gets a little more involved that I don't have time to do a full, really well thought out test class for this one during a 50 minute lecture. Actually, I actually have two examples today and I didn't get to the second one last time because this one takes a while. Um, so I had to skim through the second one pretty quick. So I want to try to get through this quick. New bank account. We're going to need names for all these bank accounts. Um, last time I just pulled names from chat. So I'm going to use names from chat if uh, nobody has any other suggestions. And let's give these accounts some amount of funds. So let's go Ray. Unfortunately, from chat, it's people from the previous lecture. But whatever. I need some names. Uh, Lydia is going to have $150. I want five accounts. Five is enough to, to get what I want to do, W. Lemon is going to have, let's say, 99.32, sure. CRN wants a million bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, point O. Oh. Uh, 
I'd say it's some more, I guess. Uh, I had one for gummy, too. But you only get a penny. All right. So we have our bank account with some accounts in there. And let's create our actual, our array list of bank accounts. Actual. For this, we're going to call our method and get what we actually, or what we actually get from calling the method. So bank dot get large accounts. And I want another variable. I don't like these magic numbers. So double threshold equals. So our threshold going to be. I want three accounts. So. Oh, I did do it right. Uh, $100. And then we expect these three accounts to be returned as our large accounts. So give me all the accounts larger than threshold. And then I, uh, what I'll do next, I, so this is where what some of you, well, actually, let me start with what, uh, what I see a lot of is go right into actual dot get of zero assert equals actual dot get of zero and say new bank account Got one extra character there, something like this, and then get of one, get of two, and assert what you want. Uh, I'm going to show a few bad ways of testing first. So uh, if you're going to zone out like halfway through lecture, don't look at this and say, "Oh, that's the way Jesse wants me to do it." That's the way I'm going to write all my tests. And if I see that in office hours, I'm going to say, "You have to watch the whole lecture because uh, we're we're going to undo this and do it a better way uh, eventually." So one issue with this already, if this is all, if this is what we're testing, you know what? Let's get the other ones out there. This one, because I only need the arguments. Like this is what a lot of test cases look like. The issue with this, what a lot of you see, especially on tests. Three, I'd say is the first time a lot of you see this issue, is you'll get, in this case, an index out of bounds error. In the case of test three, you're going to get null pointer exception when testing my incorrect solutions. The problem with this is you're making assumptions about the actual. When you call the method, the method that you're testing, and you get something back, you can't make any assumptions about what this is. You can't make any assumptions about actual. Instead, you're going to assert things about actual. Never, ever make an assumption about actual. You're going to assert that things are true. That's what you're doing in your test. This is the thing you're testing. You're not just going to assume the thing you're testing is right in any way, in any regard. We need to assert it. So in this case, the first thing I want to assert, which this one I don't do to you with array lists. Array lists, every array list question in the class says, you know, and in whatever circumstances, return an empty array list. But in general, it can be null. We find this out with linked lists. Linked lists are null all the time. Uh, if it's an empty linked list, it's supposed to be null. But here, I do want to assert for completeness that actual is not null. Because I can't assume that it's null, even though in this class you get away with that for array list specifically uh, and hash map, but not with linked lists. Uh, so I'm going to assert that it's not null. For linked lists, you have to do that. A lot of you in office hours, I'm getting these null pointer exceptions. Every single time, it's a linked list where you're not checking for null. Make sure you check for null before you access anything. If this isn't here, as soon as I hit the dot right here, this is going to give me a null pointer exception. Actually, let's get rid of this. I'm returning null right now just as my placeholder. If I run this test, I'm going to get a null pointer exception right here. I get an error. Cannot invoke get of int because actual is null. Actual is null. I get a null pointer exception right here. My incorrect solutions, especially the ones with involving linked lists, 
that don't return a linked list that's the size you expect. So you're expecting a linked list of size three. So you say, get next, get next. I feel like I've said this so many times in lecture. I still see it every day in office or every week in office hours. Um, get next, get next, get next. Well, if one of those get next return null and you're doing get value on it or get next on it, you're going to get a null pointer exception every single time. My incorrect solution, uh, if my incorrect solution isn't returning an array list of size three, my incorrect solution returns an array list of size two or even an array list of size zero, you're going to get a null pointer exception every single time. I'm, I'm shocked that I'm still seeing that. Uh, I'm going to start just linking. I should have like a list of all the times I see it in, say that in lecture with the time codes and just send that to them. Every time I get that question, here's all the times that you ignored me, but <laughs> I'm still seeing it. You know, it is what it is. Um, but this will be a null pointer exception. So we assert that it's not null and then, um, and then we can safely say, okay, we know this isn't null, but what we can still get is an index out of bounds error. We're assuming that this is an array list of size three, which isn't going to work well for us. So the first thing, the second thing I should say, that I always, always, always want to check when I'm checking an array, um, a data structure like this is one, make sure it's not null, and two, assert its size. Don't assume its size, assert its size. Assert equals, I expect this thing to give me three accounts, assert that the size is three. Actual, that size. I can call dot size. This isn't going to give me a null pointer exception because I asserted that it's not null. And since I'm asserting this, the way an assert works is if it passes, we go on to the next line of code. But if this fails, if this assertion fails, so if actual is null and this assert fails, the test shuts down, completely shuts down, returns and says this test case failed, which means if I ever make it to this line, I, guarantee, I am guaranteed the actual is not null. Because if it was null, I never would have made it to this line. The test case would have shut down right here. So if I ever make it here, now I can start not assuming, but I am asserting the actual is not null. And if I ever make it to this line, I have asserted the actual is size 3. So now I can safely treat actual as an array list of size 3. And now I'm not getting index out of bounds errors when I run these tests. I'll never get an index out of bounds error because I just asserted that it's size is three. Did not assume, but I asserted. That's what we want to do in our tests. Assert all the things that you want to be true about actual. And then only after you assert it, do you treat it, treat that property as such. Like size equals three and not null here. And then I have this test case. It's a really bad test case. Saying that right now, it's a terrible test case. Uh, the structure itself, what I'm trying to do, isn't bad. Uh, the, I like it as a test case of what it's trying to do, but it's not going to work for me. So spoilers, I'm not going to be coy about that one. It's not going to work. But why won't it work? Well, to find out why it's not going to work, let's write our methods first. We're going to implement add account. For this, we're going to need an instance variable, private array list of bank account, and the code for this one's fairly straightforward. Uh, accounts, I missed the C there, accounts equals new array list. I don't need a constructor. The only thing I would do in a constructor is initialize the array list, but I can just do that in line when I declare the variable. So this dot accounts dot add account. We're adding accounts to that array list. And then our get large accounts, the big method we want to test. This is a fairly straightforward accumulator pattern. We're going to have an accumulator variable, which a lot of the examples for the accumulator pattern, we use ints or strings even. Uh, this time it's an array list. So a little bit of a wrinkle, but not too much. Large accounts equals new array list. large accounts, plural, for, oh, I don't like that, for bank account, account in this dot accounts, if account dot check account greater than threshold, large accounts accumulate that thing into large accounts. So it's a conditional accumulator with a data structure. 
So a little bit of wrinkles from the first time you've ever seen accumulator pattern, but hopefully this is pretty straightforward at this point, this stage in your careers. Account and then return my accumulator. So that's the method. Hopefully it's right. Well, we don't have to guess if it's right. We're going to run our tests, right? We'll run our tests. And our test fails. And we get some output here, which seems a bit cryptic. So let's see what other information we can learn. Because this doesn't tell me too much. I mean, it tells me stuff, but it, it doesn't uh, give us much good information. So I'm going to set a breakpoint. I, I didn't really look at it, but I can see it's the one that's underlined. That this is the assertion that failed. So I'm going to set a breakpoint right before this one. A breakpoint, when your code hits a breakpoint in the debugger, it'll stop before this line is executed. So I'm not going to I'm, uh, hit the assertion error. I'm going to stop right before the assertion error. Then run this in the debugger and see what I can learn by looking at things. Because my test case failed. I'm inclined to believe that my code is incorrect. So I'm going to set the debugger. I didn't get much information from the output of the test of why it's incorrect. It just basically said it's incorrect, and here's some gibberish. So let's take a look at everything. I have my actual. I know what I expect it to be. It's supposed to be these three accounts. And let's see what I actually got. Zero is Ray 120.120.50. OK. Lydia 150. OK. CRN, a million bucks. OK. Well, that looks right to me. What went wrong here? Why didn't this pass? It's, just, it's exactly what we expect. Right here? Oh, I, I think it's because the git didn't execute yet. Let me see if I can go just a few more steps. Oh, hey, this is the first time I get to use step out. I, I get to talk about this button. Uh, so what I did there is I kind of got a little deep into Java internal code. And this is a place I don't want to be in my debugger. I'm not going to debug Java itself. Step out will continue running until the current stack frame ends. So even if the stack frame makes 100 more stack you know, calls, it's going to run until the current stack frame is over. So it'll make all those calls, return all those calls, and then return this one. So I'm going to get out of this. It's going to go up one. I'm in the get method still. I want to go one more time out and get back to my method here, which still didn't show, still didn't show what I got in the output. But actual, you know what, let's go a little further with this. Uh, it's going to be a bank account. Bank account. Let's check exactly what that is. Bless you. So we're going to get at index zero, which is exactly what we expect. So what went wrong? Yeah. It's comparing the objects themselves and the values of the objects. Yes. So that's what's happening here. This is a bad way of testing for that exact reason. I'm creating bank accounts here. I have new bank accounts here. And I'm creating another new bank account here. So I am testing. I'm testing that two bank account objects are equal to each other using check equals uh, or assert equals. Assert equals is going to check those two methods by calling their equals method. My bank account class doesn't have an equals method. We didn't write one, which means it's using the one it inherited from the object class, which is going to compare the objects by reference. It's only going to return true if the objects refer or the references return, uh, refer to the same object on the heap, which they don't, because I created two different 
bank account objects. This is a completely different object than this. Even though the values of all of their instance variables are the same, that's not how the default equals method operates. It's not what it does. It doesn't check the values, it checks the references, and these definitely refer to other objects. That's why when we run this test, it's not going to say the values of your objects weren't the same. It's going to say this reference is different than this reference. And that's what this output is telling us. The references don't match, so they're not the same, not the same object. Now we could go into the bank account class and write an equals method, um, but that's uh, for a few reasons not what we're not what we really want to do. Uh, one, the short answer is I'm forcing you not to do that because my correct solution in Autolab doesn't have that equals method. So when your tests run against my correct solution, whatever equals method you wrote doesn't exist if you added it to the bank account class. If you write an equals method in your test, if you write a helper method like we're about to do. If you write a helper method that compares two bank accounts, then that's going to still be there when you're testing against my solution, and that method you can use. Uh, one, I got a question after class, like, why can't we just write the equals method? Why don't you want us doing that? Uh, one, I want you getting more practice writing the tests themselves, not altering your code to fit your tests, but writing tests to fit any code, because uh, testing is a huge underlying theme of 116. I want you to be testing. Um, in uh, writing more tests and spending time in the tests. Uh, but two, more outside of 116, more for your whole career. Writing an equals method is usually um, bad. I don't really want to say bad, but it's very limiting. If you write an equals method for a class, you say this is what it's considered for two of these objects to be equal. And we write that, let's say in our bank account class, we say as long as it's the same account holder and the same amount of money, then they're equal. And then later on down the road in the same code base, I want to say, no, 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 two bank accounts are equal if they're the same account holder. And then later on still, I want to say, no, 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 two bank accounts are equal if they have the same amount of money in them. I don't care who owns them, they're equal if they have the same amount of money. Well, I only get one equals method. I have to choose one if I'm using an equals method. So it's usually better, more preferable to write your equals logic outside of the class because then you can write as many, say, comparators as you want, and you don't have to worry about sticking to just one and saying this is the absolute only way to define equality between two objects of this type. It's very restrictive. Unless there's a very clear answer to that question, the equals method is more restrictive than it, uh, than it could be. Yeah? Yeah, so the equals method is part of the object class, so everything gets it through inheritance. Every object has, uh, has an equals method. And that's, I think we only very briefly showed an equals method. Uh, it's not something I dwell on too much in this, but this is why the equals method takes an object as its parameter, because uh, that's... Well, that, that's what it has to be, I guess. Uh, because it's defined in the object class, the object class only knows about the object class, so that's our only option for an input. And then we have to check the type. Every equals method is going to check the type of the input before actually doing some comparisons. But we're not doing it that way anyway. So we want to check these values, and I want to reorganize my tests a little bit here. Now I want to shift into how I would actually go about testing this thing and do my expected. So I'm testing two things. I want my actual, I want my expected, and then I want to compare my actual versus my expected. Uh, not necessarily what you have to do. If you want to keep doing things this way, uh, you know, fine. I think that's more work. I think that's more effort than you have to put in. Uh, so I want to show you a better way. I'm going to create my array list that I expect. My expected equals new array list. Arrays dot as list. Oops, it helps if I spell it right. Autocomplete can't help me if I spell it wrong. And then grab these bank accounts. Oh my goodness, there we go. 
and then auto formatter to make it pretty again. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of all of that. And what I want to do, what my goal always is, is to make it easy to write new test cases. If I have all that logic hard coded in my test case, I'm gonna be doing a lot of work to uh, to write a new test case. I'm gonna cut and paste and then change a lot of values. I'm still gonna to have to change a lot to write another test case just because in this situation we have an input or rather populating the bank account with a bunch of, uh, the bank with a bunch of bank accounts and then we're expecting an array list in return. So we're gonna have a lot of information to specify already that we kinda of can't trim down. But I wanna get it down to my input, my expected output, I'm gonna grab my actual output, and that should be it. That's the only things that change from test case to test case. Everything else I want to not write twice, I guess. And what we're going to do is write a helper method for that. Uh, I'm gonna write check, bless you, array list of, array list of bank accounts. And I'm gonna have this helper method, actual, oops, been doing good about getting these in the right order, expected then actual. And I'm gonna have my helper method do all the work for me. This can be private, I only need it in this class. Private, it's gonna return void, which this can be, I don't know, not tricky, but something that students don't always realize right away that I'm gonna show you in a second. Array list of why that can return void. Array list of bank accounts expected. And making sure I'm consistent here, expect is going to be the first thing. Array list, bank account, actual, Let's squeeze this down so we can see the whole line. And then this method is going to have all of my asserts in it. The thing that some students just don't know you can do right away is your asserts don't actually have to be in your test. This test is done. This method is done, I should say. And I'm not gonna have a single assert in this method at all. But when I call check array list of bank accounts, that's going to have all my asserts in it. You can write asserts right in your helper methods. But if instead of assert equals, you use assert true. The third actual dot get didn't pass in expected. Oh, ooh, thank you. He shouldn't be here at all. Okay. And all my asserts are going to be up here. So the first two that we already had, assert, assert not null, Actual, I guess for completeness, this should be, bless you, if expected not equal null. Maybe I'm expecting null. I don't know. For completeness, that probably should be there. No, I don't like that. We're, we're not going to bother with that case. <laughs> uh, but we're going to assert expected, if we're writing a test case where our expected is null, where we say expected equals null, we'll, we're not calling this helper method anyway. We're just gonna do that in a separate test case. Uh, and expected, we have full control over expected, but actual is the thing we want to assert. So the next thing, assert equals expected, is our expected size. We're gonna get from the array list itself. We're not hard coding the expected size. We'll get it from our expected array list. And then actual that size. So we still have our size check in here. And then after those two, we know that expected and actual are the same size, and that actual is an actual array list, it's not null. And now it's time to start going through our indices. Uh, we can't go through with a for each loop, we have to iterate over our indices here. So our indices, I always like to get from my expected, this is just something about me, I don't know, I, I'm crazy or something. <laughs> but I'll always get my size from expected because I have full control over expected. I know that's going to be the right size in my loop, even though I just asserted that they're the same. So you could use expected or actual here. 
for me, I don't know, I go crazy when I iterate over actual dot size because I shouldn't trust actual, but after I asserted it, I know that size is what I expect. So it doesn't make a difference, but I'll always do expected dot size in that situation. And then we'll get bank account expected account equals expected dot get of I. Oh, man. Actual account, actual dot get of I. And now I can start asserting, are these bank accounts? This, this is a case where I would actually write another helper method, but I don't want to do that right now. So I'm just going to put my assert trues right here. Assert true expected account dot get account holder, actual account dot get account holder, assert true, assert equals, and assert equals expected account, oh my goodness. It's the boring lines that, that I try to go too fast on that really get me. Uh, actual account dot check account. And we'll say tenth of a penny accuracy. Run this test. Now, since we're going through and actually checking the values of our objects, we're getting the proper testing that we expect. We're making sure that each value of each object is what we expect at each location in the array list. And that's what we want from this thing. But wait, we've been doing that since task four. Why are we doing this again? Okay, so we had to do something similar for the cast list in a movie. You have to iterate over both the indices. It was assert, um, it was asserting that the strings were equal, ignoring case. So you couldn't just do array list, uh, assert equals the array list themselves. Because you can, array list does have an equals method, which will do this same thing. It'll go lock step through the indices and call assert equals on each value. We couldn't do that with the strings because we had to use assert equals ignoring case. And we can't do that with our objects because that would assert that they are referring to the same object by reference, uh, neither of which are what we want. That's why, if you're wondering why the movie thing was written that way, it's so you have to go through your array list, even though someone did show me some cheese that I didn't think of before, uh, where you can get around that in task four. Uh, task six you're gonna have a different situation. What if I have this code, get large accounts, and I change this a little bit. There's nothing in this description that says anything about the order in which the bank accounts are returned. So what happens if I do this? Instead of adding to the end of the array list, I add to the beginning of the array list, and I effectively get my accounts in the reverse order. It's still gonna return all of the right bank accounts with all the right information, it will give a correct solution, but it won't be the one that we're expecting in our tests, at least not the way that we're testing. So I run this, of course it's going to fail because, uh, because we're checking the wrong bank accounts against each other. So comparison failure, ray does not equal CRM. Ray is what we expect to be the first one, but the actual first one was what our expected last one is, but we still have all the right values Actually, let's verify that, just to, just to make sure we're not doing anything strange here. Our expected and actual. Ray, Lydia, CRN, CRN, Lydia, Ray. It's all the same values, just in a different order. This is a correct solution, and our test just said it's wrong. When you get to test, task six and you're failing the correct solution, this is probably what's happening. You, you're assuming the order. Well, hopefully not because I'm doing this in lecture now. But uh, So nobody's going to make this mistake. But you need to accept a solution even if the order is not what you're necessarily expecting, not what your expected array list, the order that those values are in. Uh, and I kind of warmed you up to this way back in, uh, in task one where there can be multiple correct solutions. Cat and dog, both of them were correct solutions, 
no matter which one is returned, you have to accept that as a correct solution. Well, here I have, you know, combinatorics come into play. I have multitudes of correct answers. And what some students like to do at first is if it equals this, or it equals this, or it equals this, or it equals, this, you know, uh, just manually, or no, I said that the wrong way. Um, if the returned array list is in this order, this order, or this order, or this order, or this order, which there are six different orders here with th three elements, and when I have my incorrect solution, which is right up to size three, but not size four, you're going to be coding a lot of combinations to write that test case. Don't do it that way, please. Uh, there's a better way. What we want to do is use our coding skills that we've been developing over the past year plus and write some code that's going to take care of that for us. We're gonna, so we're going to take the same method, but now we can't assert anything about the order of actual. So what we'll do, what we can do, there's a lot of different solutions to this problem, by the way. Whatever one you find that works best for you, go for it. I'm going to show you one solution here, though. Uh, but we do have to change quite a bit of code here. I'm still going to iterate over all of my expected values, but for each expected account, I don't want to check, is, does it exist at index i? I need to say, does it exist anywhere in this data structure? So what I'll do is create another a nested loop, and this is where I get a little crazy with the expected.size. Even though I'm iterating over actual, I'm going to do expected.size. Change my index here. So for each account that I expect, does this account exist in the actual? And for this, I'm going to use code that's a little gross. I, I never like using flags, but I'm using a flag. Boolean found equals false. I'm going to keep track of whether or not I found the value I'm looking for. Initially, I have not found it. I haven't even looked for it yet. And then if I find the value, if and I can't use my asserts here. I don't want to assert anything yet. I'm going to say if expected account holder dot equals the actual, and this can be one conditional, but I'm going to split it into two just because the line gets really long. And then if the expected account and actual account amounts, I can't use assert, so I can't use assert equals here. So we're back to math.abs of the difference less than my threshold. What did I miss? Absolute value. Oh, I didn't miss anything. Then, if, so if the account holder is the same and the funds are the same, I got myself the same account, effectively, within a tenth of a penny. We have a little tolerance here. Then I'm going to set my flag to true. So that means I found it. And then keeping track of the loops, make sure you get your code in the right loops. So in this loop, I went through this loop, and if I looked at every value in the actual array list and found was set to true, then I found that value, and I can go on with my next thing to check. But if found is false, then I'm screwed. I didn't find one of the values I'm looking for. That means I have myself an incorrect solution. So I'm going to assert true that I found that value. So if I ever get a value, check the entire actual output and don't find that value that I expect, that test fails right here. But if I find them all, this test never fails. And that means, importantly, checking the size. That means I have the same number of elements, and everything that I expect, I found. Unless I have some situation with duplicate values, that means that the actual output is exactly what I expect. I don't know the order, and I don't care the order, but it's got everything that I expect in there. With duplicate values, it gets trickier. Uh, that's why no two titles can be the same. No two Bayesian averages can be the same. I have those conditions in there. So we ain't got to worry about it for test six. I guess we didn't even get to test six content yet, so this is foreshadowing a little bit. But And then my test passes. And I like to 
Whenever I have a test like this where there's quite a bit going on and I have an assert that's in a loop, uh, I see this sometimes, uh, students will have an assert in a loop, or I will myself, I've done this before plenty of times, have an assert in a loop, but the loop actually never executes. Or you have an assert in a conditional, bless you, and the conditional is never true. So you never actually asserted anything and your test always passes. So one thing I like to do, I've got too many things open, is break my code. Let's do threshold minus 100, I guess. Knowing what my test case is, I know this is going to give the wrong answer. Uh, this should, well, this will just break on the size, though. It's not super interesting. Uh, but we do see it fail. It's breaking on the size. Let's... Well, I would. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I want to talk about linked lists. But, uh, but I would like to see this break because it's easy to write a test uh, helper method here that only checks the size, and then maybe this code is broken and never actually asserts that the values are found. Uh, or maybe I forget to reinitialize found to false, so as long as the first value's in there, it's always going to pass. Things like that. A lot of things can go wrong with that code. So make, making sure that this code is doing exactly what you expect is important to do. Um, but that's a good example of checking a data structure with containing objects that can be in any order, which is exactly what you're asked to do in task, uh, task six. So kind of gave away a bit too much, but, uh, but that's the idea. Yeah. So for trees, should we not assume the size of the corner? For trees, good question. For trees, don't test the trees is my, my answer to that one. So, and I've seen this a few times, like twice already in office hours, so maybe I have to adjust the wording on the, the assignment. Let me check it, actually, because I, I, I do want to get rid of this question forever. So testing the playlist. In the testing requirements section for task five, so let's go over this. Uh, create a playlist class with the following functionality, a constructor that takes a comparator, an add song method, a get song list method, and that's it. So that's all you're testing. You're going to create a playlist, you're going to add songs, and you're going to call get song list, and whatever the song list returns, that's what you're going to test. Nowhere in there does it say get the root of a tree and make sure it returns the right tree. You're not testing that. And that's why the programming requirements for this specific assignment are different than the testing requirements. Usually programming requirements, I'm like, just implement the stuff you just tested. Uh, for this one, there's extra stuff that you're implementing that you're not writing tests for. Just like the comparators in the last one, you wrote those, but you didn't have to write any tests for them. You don't have to test a tree at all. At no point should you be navigating a tree and asserting that all the nodes are what you expect. The reason for this is testing a linked list is the same concept, uh, and testing a tree is just more tedious. If you can test the linked list, I believe you can test the tree, uh, but it's just a lot more minutia to go through it. Yep. Do you have to test the comparator? I just said you don't have to test the comparator. I just said that. <laughs> no, you don't have to test the... You don't have to test the... Nope. Nope. You're not testing the tree at all. Yeah, it, it's too much of a pain. I didn't even want to write it for my grader. It sucked. It's, it's just a lot of work, but it's not, I don't know, it's just easy to make little mistakes, but I don't know if, how much you learn from it. Yeah. If an in order and post order match, if they return the same order? No, not necessarily. You'll get different, you'll visit them in different order. Uh, now I'm trying to think of what that would mean if they do match. I don't know. I don't know, but I want to get to the, this last example. Uh, so I, I wanted to go through the, you know, the range method. We're not going to have time for that, and I want to save Friday for just debugger. Uh, maybe I'll implement this method and do it wrong and then use that as my first debugger example. Maybe that'll be uh, what I end up doing. Um, but I still want to talk about this test link list. This is in the week nine code. This is the code that we wrote last semester. 
for this same topic. And this compare linked lists, ignoring case uh, method is how I like to compare linked lists. I want to create, create my expected linked list. This is what I expect. Get my actual linked list from the method that I'm testing, which I forget what I'm testing here. Maybe this is just a made up, oh yeah, this is just a made up example where I'm not actually testing a method. I'm just creating two linked lists and comparing them to see if they're the same while ignoring case. Um, but I have my two linked lists that I want to check. I'm going to have my helper method and go through all the nodes and all the values of these linked lists and make sure they have this, the right values that I expect. For this, the first thing I'm going to do is if my expected is null, so if I'm expecting an empty linked list, I want to make sure that my actual is also empty. If expected is not null, that means I'm expecting actual to not be null, so I'm going to assert that actual is not null. 